Okay, this is my preview video for Deontay Wilder's second defense of the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World, which he won off Bernie Stavern, defending against Molina, and now he fights Johan Duapas. Now, where do we begin? Uh, I'll talk a bit about the champion Deontay Wilder. We know Deontay Wilder is a noted puncher. We know that he's athletic, he's tall. And if you're on the end of that right hand, um, you know, and your back's against the ropes, he's going to take you out. Positives. Um, he's a very colourful character. And he's a guy just trying to do the best he can to keep hold of his championship. Now, vulnerabilities against Molina were shown. Uh, Molina, when he threw the jab, John Tawell was pulling straight back from punches, leaving his chin in the air. And not actually having the ability to actually block the jab rather than pulling his chin back and use his reflexes rather than using his hands to block jabs. Uh, the other thing was the whole thing about his chin has been brought up again. We look back at the Molina fight. Molina was able to rock um, Wilder with some good punches. And that was after Molina went to the body then came upstairs to the head. Now Molina... For all intended purposes, was meant to be a inverted commas knockover job. Everyone expected Molina to go over in a couple of rounds. Didn't expect him to go as long as he did, based on the fact that Ariola had KO'd him in a round. So Molina came with some ambition. Now, for Duapas, this guy I think is more than a step above Molina, simply because if you look at Johan Duapas, he has fought. Tepa, who I rate very highly, um, and he has been beaten by Manuel Shah. Okay, uh, the Manuel Shah fight was when Lewis trained Manuel Shah for that fight. I remember, and people expected Shah to win that fight, and he didn't. So here we have the situation with this challenger. He's the number one ranked heavyweight in France. I think he's ranked a thirty-seven or something. This guy, for more intended purposes, if he didn't have a chin, Tepper would have knocked him out. Um, so, uh, he was able to take Tepper's best shots, and he went the distance with Tepper. He went the distance with Manuel Shah. And based on the fact that Deontay Wilder was meant to get rid of Molina in the first or second round, that he's this thunderous puncher. And then, having spoken to Baymain Stavern, and then seen the Molina fight, maybe Deontay Wilder's punch power as he's moved up the levels, isn't as good or as powerful as it is when he um, fights lower level opposition, simply because lower level opposition kind of stand there and they take the full full force of the punch, whereas a higher level opposition are a little bit more aware, a little bit more defensively cute, slip punches more, and of course are throwing their own punches back. So that leaves itself out. With Duapas, there are things that they need to be, the, the, the Wilder camp and boxing fans need to be aware of. Duapas is the sort of guy, he's got the sort of style to expose weaknesses in Deontay Wilder. If Molina was able to get in and throw those punches, then Duapas is a guy that throws good punches to the body and to the head. He does throw combinations very nicely. He does it out of a, a shell. He throws his punches rather than like Tepe, tucks it very tight. And moves forward. Now if he's able to stay on the. Get on the inside of Wilder. There could be some serious problems for Wilder on the night. If Wilder can keep Duapas on the end of his jab. And catch him early. Now Duapas seems to have a good chin. Um, and if he comes with the purpose to win. And I do put that in inverted commas. The purpose to win. And, you know, he's trained seriously. And the other thing about Duapas in comparison to Molina, this guy looks like he comes into shape. I mean, I've never seen Duapas look out of shape. This guy looks like he's in good shape. He's not going to come into the ring with any rolls. Having said that, now he'll probably go to the weigh-in now and have rolls on him. But he looks in good shape. Um, a good physical specimen himself. Um, has some pop in his punches. And, if you know, if Wilder hasn't tidied up his um, defence... There could be some problems on the night for me, Deontay Wilder. This is definitely a step up for Molina. I think it's a definite step up. Unless Wilder, and this is heavyweight boxing, you get caught with a punch, you get knocked out, it can happen. 
let's just hope Mr. Wilder can get rid of Duapas in the first couple of rounds because I think the longer this fight goes, the more dangerous Duapas will be, I think. Uh, because Duapas, um, I saw in his fight against Tepper, when he felt comfortable, he knew he could take um, Tepper's punches. He was very nice. He could throw punches off the counter. As Tepper was coming, he was able to catch Tepper coming in with the counter shots. And um, Deontay Wilder doesn't strike me as a fighter that is uh, aware of counter punching that much. He seems to be a fighter that will cut. Because he comes in quite reckless and wild at times, there's always a possibility to get countered off the ropes because Duapas does have a counter right. You go back and look at the fights with Tepper and against uh, Char. So he does tuck up nicely, he has a good chin, and he can whack a bit, and he puts punches together. All the things necessary to beat Deontay Wilder. Tucks up tight. Uh, when Deontay Wilder throws, he'll tuck up tight and then throw his own punches. And if Duhapas can take what Deontay Wilder's got and start stepping him back and getting on the inside, wow, we've got a big fight on our hands and a possible upset on the cards. What does Wilder have in his favour? Speed. Duapas is a plodder. If you understand the word plod, that's what Duapas does. He plods. But when you plod, that's not a bad thing. Um, Joe Louis was one as well. I'm not comparing Duapas to Joe Louis. I'm just explaining the plodding thing. He was very, he was a plodder. You know, an, another plodder. George Foreman, a plodder. Because you plod and somebody else is fast, doesn't mean much. If you can plod and slow a person down by good body shots and then bring them down to your own your own pace of things, then you, you don't exert as much energy. Then, you know, then the plodding becomes effective. But if you're plodding and you're, you're not un, uh, unable to execute your own game plan by throwing body shots and slowing your opponent down and landing punches, then, you know, then you can be quite pedestrian and get outboxed, outmaneuvered. It depends on what kind of a plodder Duhapas is. It also depends on what sort of ambition Duhapas is. Is Duhapas been brought over as a guy to fall over? Is he brought over as a guy, you know, to make Deontay look good? Or is he really over in his own intentions to upset the apple cart? Those questions I cannot answer. And when you're in that sort of a realm... You know, we thought that Deontay would probably have to fight Povetkin next. How Duhapas has become uh, the ranked challenger to fight um, Deontay Wilder is beyond me. Um, but Deontay Wilder, I know he has had issues with what I've said in the past. You know, I gave him credit for the Bermain Stavern fight. He's had a gimme fight with Molina. But this fight, I, with two voluntary defences, fair enough. Then he's got to fight Povetkin next. Um, Povetkin's got... A, um, a fight in his hand against um, uh, Wack, Mario's back. But as back for Wilder, Lennox Lewis has warned Deontay Wilder in one of his videos. He said that Deontay Wilder needs a new trainer. He needs a new trainer. And I can see the fundamental issues there. If Deontay Wilder get, got, gets a new trainer, I believe he could go much further in the division. You know, in terms of protecting his chin more, throwing his jab and keeping his chin tucked behind his his chin tucked behind his uh, shoulder, as opposed to leaving his chin in the air and not pulling straight back from punches, rather than rolling either rolling with punches or stepping to the side. Never step straight back from punches. Never step back from straight straight back from punches because when you step back and you've got no defense and somebody slings a punch over the top, even a lucky punch, you get knocked. You can get knocked out. I said this in the uh, Marcus Huck fight. I was, it tells who you who were on Twitter would have seen when I said Huck's going to get knocked out tonight. He keeps pulling straight back from punches and he got pulled straight back from punch and that's how he got knocked out. So uh, the, the wilder story for me, a lot of people say he's a beast. I would say he's an athletic fighter that hasn't come to his full potential. I know a lot of people will not like me saying this, but if you were to adapt more of a Klitschko type style with that power and that speed and that movement, he could become a dominant heavyweight because then you've got a guy who's defensively responsible, doesn't leave his chin in the way, so it makes it more difficult to beat him. Also, with that as well, he'll still get the knockouts. Um, he's that type of guy. He won't be as wild and reckless coming in which means he's not vulnerable to getting countered. 
So those are my tips in terms of Deontay Wilder's future because with the, the sort of style he's got now, Al Heyman will have to keep ducking and diving and picking fighters that, you know, do not expose the style of Deontay Wilder. And it's not only so long you can hold on to that WBC title belt without somebody coming along and actually snatching the title away. So at the moment, Deontay's keeping the belt warm with this current style that he has. He could become a dominant champion if he changes trainer and adopts more of a Klitschko style. But, you know, most fighters learn the hard way. They need to get knocked out and defeated for them to understand that you can't pull straight back from punches. You've got to block the jab or slip. You've got to have lateral movement. You can't rely on punch power alone. And you need to be using the jab more often, setting the jab up with punch, putting punches together or more effectively. And knowing when to punch and when not to punch, to be in range and to be out of range, and things like that. Uh, you know, when you get to the higher level of boxing and fighting better opposition with guys who can slip your punches and counter you for making bad mistakes, that's when you find out. At the level that Deontay's been fight fighting, um, he has not been able to have to deal with that. And if you go back to his amateur career, you know, it wasn't a big guy that knocked Deontay Wilder out. It was a much smaller guy who was able to get inside and do damage. It's being able to hit that chin. And like I said, if Duhapas comes with the ambition to win and hits Deontay on the chin, he throws good combinations. I think better than Molina. I think he's a better fighter than Molina. I think he's a better boxer than Molina. I think he's more athletic, better, more athletic than Molina. I think he comes in better shape than Molina. And I think that, you know, it'll, again, it depends on what the plan for Duhapas is. The guy before that they were going to try and bring him before was Polish. And he had an awful record, been knocked out a few times. So this guy's obviously a step up. And I think this guy's a step up to Molina. So it's a step up. It's not the step up in the direction people want. But it's still a step up. So I just hope Deontay Wilder can get the job done. But I'm just, I can't make a prediction for this fight, to be honest. But uh, Duhapas is no bum. And he's very capable of causing an upset here. Very capable. Whether he can, and he, whether he can, whether he will, is not that uh, altogether. Ambition and what his script is. Is he the full guy? Or is he on his own script where he can come on and come in and really cause a sensation? Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. I'm out.